Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. They had a quarrel one day. Johnny said he was leaving home. He was going away to stay, never coming home. Going away to Rome. Now Frankie begged and she pleaded. Oh, my honey, please stay. Johnny, I know I've done you wrong, but please don't go away. And Frankie cried. And Johnny sighed. Oh, I'm going away. I'm leaving today. I'm never coming home. You're gonna miss me, honey, in the days to come. <laughs> when a winter, when the gift baby fawn over there. Up, you know you Hello, me. baby fawn. Wish me back your loving man. Doing, 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 doing. You're gonna miss me, honey, in the days to come. Well, hello, YouTube. Uh, hope everyone's day is going better than mine. Today, I'm a little aggravated. And it has something to do with this and this. And to quote one of my favorite rock bands, it's na -na 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 nobody's fault but mine. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's go, uh, let's go vlogger style here a little bit. See if I can do this without making everyone sick to their stomachs. So where am I? I'm on the very back of the property. I'm going to uh, use the map that I've been using here recently to kind of help you guys figure out where I am. So I'm right here and I'll have to do the sound effects. I can include it in the video. So I'm on the pipeline right away, which um, those of you who have been with the channel a while, you know that uh, the natural gas company has a right away back through here on the back part of the property. They've had it uh, way longer than I've ever been here. I've been here 20 years. And they've had this right away forever. So you can see my big head out of the way. Goes away that way up the mountain, up the mountain, over our property line at the top of the mountain. And then it even goes, woo, spin around. Goes this way, all the way out of our valley and up the mountain. Well, if you notice, right now it is, as we're shooting this, it's the end of July. So things should be very green and bushy, like this stuff. Or if we go the opposite direction, here we go, Ooh, hang on. Green and bushy like that stuff. But it's not. The pipeline, oh, come back into the picture, Troy. The pipeline has been sprayed with herbicide. So um, that's where I'm disappointed. This is the first time uh, since I've been here that they've gotten away with doing this. And again, it's nobody's fault but mine. They actually go through um, what I consider uh, decent practices, uh, decent processes to make sure people know that this is going to happen and to obviously stop it. So let me show you something. So on April 5th of this year, I receive a letter that says, Dear Pipeline Neighbor, we want to destroy everything you own and ruin your farm. No, that's not exactly what it says. <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, just kind of hit the highlights and you'll get it. Um, it's basically saying that coming up soon, we are going to spray your property with herbicides as a way to keep our pipeline right away clear. Now this seems to be an ongoing practice. It's, it's been done for, in our area, it's been done for um, about a decade or so. Usually they have mechanical means in which they come in and clear or Usually I mow this. Um, I, I keep, out of all the pipeline that's on our property, I keep probably 80% of it mowed. The rest of it, you know, there's portions that are too steep for me to mow. So they would come in with mechanical means and, and clear that, keep it clear. Obviously there's a large, where that little stake is right here and right where I'm standing now, is my understanding a 20 inch gas pipeline. So uh, you know, obviously nothing you want to mess with. You don't want a tree growing up through it and and severing that and causing a leak and blowing up half the valley, that would be a drag. So I understand that. Again, this was here before I was, so I really don't have a lot of ground to stand on, <laughs> pardon the pun, when it comes to uh, complaining about this. But they did their due diligence in sending me a letter. I neglected. It's one of those things that ended up in the to-do pile, didn't get done. I neglected to call them and let them know. They actually... They say here, should you desire to prohibit herbicide application on your property, please contact us within 30 days from the receipt of this letter. Also, should you have, a cons have any concerns or require additional information about this project, blah, 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 call this. So they gave me an out. And in the past, I've, yeah, they send this to me about every, I think they do about every three years maintenance. 
And so they sent it to me and I've always called them and said, nope, nope, don't do it. I'll get it taken care of. Uh, or say, hey, I'll get 70% of it taken care of. You guys got to take care of the other 30% with your mechanical means, your dozer, your bush hog, whatever you're going to use. Well, that didn't happen this time. Again, I let it slip through the cracks. <clears throat> So I know several of you are saying, well, Troy, quit your whining. This is where the video should end. You screwed up. You didn't do what you were supposed to. And they went ahead and sprayed your property. End of story, right? Yeah, technically. Uh, but I wanted to, <laughs> the thing that gets me is the, uh, being, a, being a marketing guy, the thing that gets me is the marketing they include. So here's the marketing piece. This is the herbicide information sheet. And this is probably what, what cracks me up the most. And again, you guys may disagree. That's fine. That's why we have comments. You can disagree all day long. <clears throat> So first of all, why does this company use herbicides? Well, their reasoning for me as a property owner to understand why they do this, first is maintaining low growing vegetation allows for effective patrol, quick access in the event of emergency, and creates a well-defined corridor, reducing the risk of potential damage by nearby excavation. So they're saying the reason why we do this is obviously we want a clear defined right away to show that this is where this pipeline is. 20 inch gas main is pretty, pretty deadly if somebody starts jacking around with it. I get that. Um, you know, I'm not allowed to build on top of this right away. I'm not allowed to build, build, I think it was within 50 feet of the edges of this right away. Um, that's, you know, part of the agreement. So I get that. I get you need a clear defined area. So they also include in this, some of the benefits of using herbicide. And again, as a property owner, this is for me to uh, relate to as well. Repeated clearing or mowing using only mechanical methods is often not fully effective for long-term vegetation control. So you keep mowing, you're not going to control vegetation. When herbicides are used in conjunction with or in place of mechanical clearing, growth of desirable plants can be promoted within the right-of-way. Okay, <laughs> so, so blanket application of herbicide will, will allow desirable plants to be promoted. Now, again, you could argue, well, I can see how that could possibly be, but really, when you, when you nuke everything in here and it's dead, then... You're kind of starting over the the seed bed of invasives all that stuff is in here it's going to grow back up now if, if you're dealing with a canopy of something let's say we had a bunch of autumn olive here and they killed it then yeah maybe it has a chance for something else to grow but note there's all the autumn olive they didn't kill it because it's not in the right away <laughs> i keep the right away mode so there is an autumn olive it's all right there <gasps> Herbicides also help foster biodiversity by encouraging growth of native grasses and flowering plants Rights of way maintained in an herbaceous state have a positive impact on pollinator habitat. Okay, now that's, that's a bit of a stretch. So by using herbicides, we are having a positive impact on pollinator habitat. Yeah, that's a pretty good stretch. <laughs> Again, you nuke everything, stuff gets to grow back up. Okay, yeah, I get it. There could be some stuff that comes up flowering that's going to... Uh, uh, pollinators are going to uh, jump all over that. But if you really wanted to maintain this, and again, it's my responsibility. I, I get that. If you really wanted to maintain this for the sake of the property owner, I don't think mass application of herbicide is the way that you're going to promote uh, biodiversity and pollinator beneficial plants. It's just me. The compounds used are biodegradable and can be used to target noxious weeds or invasive plant species without harming desirable growth. Everything on this pipeline must be noxious because <laughs> it's all dying. It's dying pretty quickly, actually. In fact, actually, some of the invasives are still growing. Um, when I look down the path here, it's, it's actually the Timothy grasses and some of, the, some of the other smaller hay grasses that are dead first. I probably shouldn't have done that. Now I have to wash my hands. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how effective that is. And I don't think there's any selectivity in this. I think it was... Uh, I think it was full bore. Herbicide applications minimize disturbance to landowners as mechanical maintenance activities may be required less frequently. So their argument is if we get to use herbicides more, then we don't have to bring the big equipment in here to knock stuff over. Yeah, that's true. Which is more expensive for your company? Um, land blasting with herbicides or bringing equipment in to, uh, to clear? You could say both have a negative environmental impact simply because, especially in this area, you bring a dozer in here and knock some of this stuff over, you've got potential erosion issues and topsoil loss. But if you just spray it every single uh, time, then you're going to have uh, less of a footprint and you're also going to have less of expense by not having to have heavy equipment in. 
this pipeline goes on for miles, hundreds and hundreds of miles through West Virginia. So that's a lot of ground to cover. So the question of, are these herbicides safe? Well, here's what really puts my mind at ease. The herbicides selected for use by Blank Company have been extensively tested by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Woohoo! Here's the government to save the day before being approved for use. Furthermore, agencies such as the State Department of Agriculture, another shining example of government, regulate herbicides applications through the use of public notification requirements, mandated record keeping, applicator training, and cert certification programs. So there you go, boys and girls. These herbicides are safe because your government says so. Where and how does blank apply herbicides? This is one that cracks me up. Applications will not take place within maintained land use sites, such as lawns, areas of active agriculture, pasture lands, or hay fields. The most common method of application is through targeted backpack spraying. So obviously there was a team of guys walking through here spraying. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of drunk monkey going on here. There's, there's definitely some spots that, that have survived. Um, again, I don't think they were targeting... Um, specifics. Not a lot of trees here, so again, I can't tell if they were just going after after trees, but with the amount of death that's around here, it uh, definitely wasn't that selective. Depending on the location, the right-of-ways and surrounding land use, tractor, helicopter, or UTV applications are occasionally used. Ideally, herbicide applications are performed on right-of-way within one or two growing seasons following mechanical maintenance. Ongoing application keeps right of way in an open meadow like condition. Oh, it's an open meadow like condition now. <laughs> it is laid to waste. Well, ironically, right here behind the camera was an autumn olive. So here's an autumn olive that uh, they've sprayed, and uh, it is dead. Or is it? Still looks to be a little bit of growth there. I believe I'm standing in. Uh, an invasive grass. Um, one of you guys commented on what this was. I'm not that familiar with it, but I believe it's a, an Asian import that is uh, pretty nasty stuff. I have it all over the place. Pigs lead it, though. So um, the, the thing about this letter, again, I know I've said it three times already. Nobody's fault but mine, right? I should have called. If I'd have called, it'd have been a non-issue, unless they forgot and went ahead and did it anyway. I haven't run into that yet. But uh, this information sheet, to me, the things that aren't on it really speak volumes. And the thing that really jumps out, at no point do they mention the chemical they've used. So they're saying this herbicide is biodegradable. They're saying it's approved by the EPA and the Department of Ag. And people have been trained on how to use it, blah, 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 blah. But they never, ever talk about what it was. My guess is that this is probably glyphosate... Um, type herbicide. Um, I would almost bet my lunch money on that. So what are my options? Am I screwed now that my property has been sprayed with herbicide? Well, I'm not giving up, obviously. And fortunately, being on 100 acres, uh, this happened to be on the very back of the property. The pigs, the garden, all of that stuff is, it is downstream. So if there is runoff, um, again, uh, water would run this way. Uh, any leaching is not affecting uh, enough to kill the plants downstream yet. Um, but we know that stuff ends up in the groundwater, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> Fortunately, our garden is, uh, is higher in elevation, so we don't have to have any issues there as far as affecting those plants. And again, it's, it's a good half mile away, uh, so not, not a direct issue if it had been right there by the house. But I am still aggravated. It's, again, my fault, but I'm just aggravated. It's something I don't do. I don't use it. I choose not to use those products on my property. Um, and you know, somebody else comes in and does that. You know, frankly, this, this is an issue that, that I deal with simply because I have a right-of-way. I, I chose to buy land that had an active gas right-of-way on it. So uh, with that, there becomes obviously a certain level of responsibility that I, the property owner, and the pipeline company have in communicating with one another. They did all the things that they were required to do by law. It was just an, um, obviously my issue with not following up. But 
you know, some of the videos we've done in the past talking about do you buy land that has these type of right-of-ways or should you stay clear of them? Well, I still believe you can get good deals on land uh, if you fall in love with a piece of land and it happens to have a right-of-way through it. It's not a complete deal breaker, but this is a perfect example of things that you have to contend with should you buy a piece of land that has a utility right-of-way on it. Um, these companies are always looking for ways to save money but still do the things they're required to do. Uh, you know, electric right away, those, you know, they're going to do whatever they can. If spraying herbicides is going to be the cheapest way to do it, you bet your bottom dollar that's what they're going to do. They're going to find a way to do that uh, and, and get around those. Now, interestingly enough, when I, in the past, when I say, no, I do not want you spraying, they have never forced my hand on saying, well, you need to clear it. You need to do this. Now, they do still come in with mechanical means every so often and clear, which I don't mind them doing. To me, that's, that's less of a footprint if they bring a dozer or, or some other equipment through here. That doesn't bother me as much. But they still have to be on the line. They still have to keep this right-of-way clear and safe. Again, I would be upset. You know, I'm upset that they sprayed it, but I would be more upset if they blew me and my family up because of a lack of maintenance. So it's, you know, it's really a give and take there to some degree. But enough of me rambling, enough of being mean aggravated. Again, my fault. All right, take care, everybody.